G'day team, it's your old mate the Kiwi Badger. And uh, <laughs> what do you know, another shed vlog. So, uh, as you know, um, I took the old ST and we've got the new number plate. And, woohoo! I've got some uh, <coughs> a Warren of Fitness registration, so that means that the bike is now totally legal to be ridden on the road, uh, which is really, really exciting. Except for this. And those of you that might be versed uh, in mechanical parts, you know that this is a clutch basket uh, and these are the steel plates and I'm missing fibre plates. Um, my last video I was at the uh, vehicle testing station and uh, I had some issues with the clutch. Excuse me, I'm just going to drink a bit of a coffee while we do this. So we had a bit of a clutch slipping issue. Um, so this is the first time I've ever <coughs> touched a clutch on an ST1100. So this is a, a first for me, this bike, uh, it's the first time I've ever had to play with ABS and this is the first time I've ever done a clutch on one of these bikes. Uh, it's a V4, um, a, longitudinal, a longitudinal V4, so normally we have two more pipes that come out down and wrap around the front of the uh, clutch housing which is right there. <coughs> um, so in order to get the clutch out you have to remove obviously the side fairing you have to take the crash bar off which is right here um, you have to remove the header from here um, which hasn't been too hard you've got a selection of uh, what do you got one two three four five bolts to get the uh, the, the um, crash protection and whatnot off uh, and then there's, <coughs> uh, what have we got, I think it's five long 10mm bolts and four short 10mm bolts. Then there's a 30mm um, nut on the middle um, of the, that there. Um, and then everything sort of slips out, it's pretty easy. Um, I will be reusing the oil out of this because the oil has only done 18 miles. So uh, yeah. I'll be reusing the oil. So I've got uh, an order in with Gary Worsley Motorcycles for new clutch friction plates. So hopefully they get in uh, tomorrow being Saturday. <coughs> uh, we only got compliance for the bike. Um, what's today? Today's Friday. We've got compliance for the bike on Thursday I think it was. So we'll have a new clutch in it by Saturday. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to then ride it legally on the road because uh, my partner and I have a child free weekend coming up not this weekend but next weekend and we would like to weather permitting put the, uh, the luggage on the bike and head away um, yeah which is the whole reason we bought the bike is for us to get out and do things so yeah um, I didn't make a detailed video about uh, I'll have to fix that as well. Um, <clears throat> I did not make a detailed video about how to remove uh, the clutch, but if you've got an ST1100 and you want to do a clutch uh, change, then uh, yeah, you've got to remove the side fairing, <clears throat> you'll have to remove the header to gain access to the uh, clutch housing, 10 bolts um, to get the 30mm centre nut off. I had to put a uh, I had to put this through the back wheel. I put the bike in gear and I had to put a that red bar to lock the wheel um, because it's pretty hard to turn that uh, 30 mil nut even with where is it? Even with a decent sized breaker bar. Uh, yeah. So there's all the components for the clutch waiting for uh, for me to reassemble. I did notice too where the uh, slave cylinder went into the front so the uh, when you depress the clutch lever there's a pin that goes through there um, which is activated or actuated by this here. Um, clearly there'd been <coughs> a bit of uh, brake 
or clutch fluid leak and there's a lot of oxidization and build up inside this orifice uh, so I've obviously cleaned that out uh, yeah so the steel plates themselves um, aren't too bad there's no coloration on them so I'll be reusing those with some new fiber plates most of the fiber plates didn't look too bad actually it was just the front fiber plate and the rear one so how it would normally look is on the, uh, the stack here let's see if we can okay so on the stack you would have a fiber plate a steel plate fiber plate steel plate fiber plate steel plate so on and so forth until this is full and then this sits inside here um, and that's actuated up and down or back and forth um, under load with the springs there so um, yeah so the steel plates look all right to me I'm no clutch expert but I'm going to reuse those there's no wear or tear um, that I can see on the basket so I'm happy to reuse that clearly um, yeah so we'll get those new friction plates redo the stack reassemble everything put the wheel back in and hopefully I have a fully functioning clutch I still need a name for the bike though however excuse me maybe Wolfie so that's an Irish wolfhound that's what that graphic is Wolfie maybe Wolfie team how we going well uh, it's the next day or the day after the last video or the day after the day after the last video I don't know but um, here's all my clutch components here um, with the new fiber rings here um, so I'm going to reassemble it and um, yeah first time doing a clutch on a bike like this so we'll see how it goes I think I've got everything I need and these are pre-soaked I believe because they are um, they have remnants of oil on them so uh, yeah but the, uh, the manual here does not say to soak them. The manual here says just to smear oil on them. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow this uh, manual here. And um, yeah. Let's do it. G'day team. If, you're, um, if you've got an ST and you're trying to do a clutch change, I have a couple of tips for you. Okay, so um, this basket does not just slide straight on and straight off. Okay. Um, it's got a sprung gear on it and uh, in order for it to slide in you slide it part of the way in and it will engage and you can feel it sort of sitting there okay it's engaged but then you need to slide it back past a sprung gear onto another cog in which case you need to use I use the screwdriver okay to turn this okay um, so that it aligns up with the other teeth and then using a mallet, uh, a mallet I just gave it a tap and tapped it back into position then what you have and I don't know if this will be picked up on here probably not um, there are four pins one two three and one over there four pins and on the back of the basket on the back of this thing here there are four corresponding holes one two three four now, that's your oil pump drive now you need to line those up now in order to do that um, geez, uh, there is a gap right here okay this gap you need to get a, a screwdriver okay and in the back behind there I don't know if we're going to be able to see it there is a there's a gear the oil pump drive gear is behind here it's got a chain on it you need to turn the sprocket behind the basket in order for the holes to line up on here and then tap it backwards okay the manual does not um, this is a pretty good manual it's pretty in depth but as someone who's never done this before um, that didn't explain it I had to figure it out first of all what I did is I put the bike in drive uh, spun the wheel got my son to spin the wheel which turned this main drive this main shaft here thinking that the four pegs on the back would align with the four holes um, but as it turns out uh, this just spins through so if we look at this gear here no it's really hard to see oh, there's a better picture so I thought that it would as I spun the wheel and that main shaft did turn I thought it would turn this cog here and align the four holes with the back of the basket but it doesn't you have to spin this one here oh jeepers I'm really sorry about the camera work you have to spin this here okay through that gap I showed you using a screwdriver so just turning this and it will 
obviously turn this sprocket okay lining up your four holes and the way you access it is through this gap here okay you can sort of see it right at the back there is a gear if I move the button it might help you uh, probably not really no, that's no better okay so um, yeah uh, that's my first learning curve okay um, yeah as I come across headaches and solutions I will update you but most of it's pretty straightforward okay um, as you pull it out put it back in in reverse order okay it's um that's pretty straightforward so far <sighs> anyway onwards radio team bit of an update here I've got the uh, the clutch back in with the stack of uh, fiber and, and um, steel plates back in the manual says to put the basket in and then put the plates in one by one then fitting the um, this part here what I found easiest was to take the uh, I suppose the innards the two halves of the inside of the basket make the stack and then insert the whole lot um, it was far easier than um, inserting this bit last so uh, yeah that's kind of where we're at I'm just going to install the center nut and then I've got to put the uh, tension spring things um, on so yeah we'll see how we go so team we got another update um, I just simply cannot for the life of me bleed that slave cylinder um, I'm getting absolutely no resistance through the lever whatsoever he says just about knocking off that um, so I don't know what to do um, I think I'm just gonna send it into the bike shop have them come pick it up and um, do it for me because I'm at my wits end I'm just about ready to push it off the table um, but the uh, the clutch is all in hopefully I've done that properly and now I'm just done a second and guess myself on the clutch because um, bleeding something like a slave cylinder should be extremely easy I mean I've it's no different to bleeding brakes um, or the slave cylinder on the VTR I just simply do not know what is going on with this it's starting to really annoy me so um, before I do something drastic um, I figure I'll just step away from it and um, yep get Gary's Gary was their motorcycles they can uh, have a crack at it and see if they can um, they can do it for me so that's where we're kind of at um, once we get the bike back we'll put the wheel back in it put the uh, the headers back on the side get the fairing back on and uh, we'll be riding <laughs> 